Rob Font versus Marlon Vera. Now, what really happened in this fight? A good performance by both fighters. Both Rob Font and Marlon Vera put up a good effort. And not only is there credit given to both Cheeto and Font, we have to also give credit to Jose Aldo. The amount of Jose Aldo influence in this fight is pretty insane. Both Rob Font and Marlon Vera have used techniques on each other that Jose Aldo found out about them when he fought them. Jose Aldo found that the left hook against Rob Font was very effective, landing multiple of them throughout their fight and stunning Rob Font whenever he did it. He also found short right straights inside pocket exchanges while Rob Font was trying to smother him. Marlon Vera brought both of those into the fight. A guy that's not known for the left hook was stunning Rob Font with the very same punch that Jose Aldo brought into this. And then on the other side, Jose Aldo was landing body shots on Marlon Vera, left hooks and right hooks to the body as Marlon was leaning forward, pointing up a high guard whenever he sees the opponent winding up for some big punch. This naturally exposes the body for the hooks of Jose Aldo. Rafan brought that in here as well. He was landing big right hooks and right uppercuts to the body as Marlon was giving the same exact reaction. So credit to both Rafan and Marlon Vera, but also give credit to Jose Aldo somehow finding relevancy in this fight that he didn't even participate in. A good performance by both fighters, honestly, even though Rafan lost the fight clearly, he did put together a lot of good combinations and show to even outstrike Vera on many occasions until Cheeto decided to switch up the approach. He started slow and was almost entirely defensive, allowing Font to control the fight and string up many of his different combinations to the point where it was puzzling Cheeto on which angles Font's punches were coming from. Because Rob Font didn't really put together a complicated game. He fights by the fundamentals. He's an MMA fighter who boxes by the fundamentals. A lot of jabs, right straights, some right hooks, some right uppercuts, and left hooks to set things up. He'll attack the body and he'll attack the head. There's nothing really too complex of what he does. He's just super efficient at what he does. That's why his jab is regarded as one of the best jabs in the entire bantamweight division. He was putting together a lot of jabs, a lot of one-two combinations that were getting through the guard, connecting to Chito from a distance, especially when Chito was being extremely defensive in the fight. It allowed Rafan to almost target practice with him to pick out the openings. He was getting sharper with his punches as Chito was willing to just be kind of, I don't want to say a punching bag, but almost like a sparring partner. And what I really want to talk about is Rafan's 1-2-3 combination which actually he went away from later in the fight his jab right cross left hook combo was landing almost every time he was throwing it against Cheeto even after changing up the approach Cheeto was defensive early then upped his offense later and still the one two three combo was connecting on him even to the point where Cheeto was getting the hang of the one two he was pairing a lot of the jabs even pairing a lot of the right straights he was rolling with the right straight many times his defense in this fight was so impeccable, and I'll get to that later, how technical his defense actually is. It will shock you how much ahead he is from most of the fighters in this division when it comes to defense. But even after he was getting used to that simple 1-2 combo from Rob Font that he's seen many times on tape and in the fight, that left hook ending the combo almost always caught him. It's a deceptively long left hook, and it has a bit of an off timing, because the 1-2 is pretty quick, and then the left hook is like lingering slowly out there. And it shows you that not all the time you need fast punches in order to land them. It's just the timing has to be correct. But when these combinations were landing early on Cheeto when he was being super defensive, again, he was being puzzled. He was being so confused about the angles of the punches to the point where he didn't even know if it was going to be a right straight. He didn't know if it was going to be a right hook. He didn't know if it was going to be a right uppercut. And when you get to that point in the fight, when you're so confused about the angle from one of your opponent's hands, you have given too much control to your opponent. At this moment, about 2 minutes and 51 seconds of the second round, that's when Cheeto knew he needed to change things up a little bit. He needs to start getting offensive against Rob Font and give Font something to react to. And boy, did that work. He was landing a lot more jabs, which was having a very different kind of an effect on Rob Font. Font's punches did not affect Cheeto Vera at all. They did nothing to him. They literally did nothing to him. He would land big shots on him, and it just was not impactful at all. Cheeto's chin is something out of this world, and I see a lot of people saying that just Rob Font can't hit. No, that's not necessarily true. Rob Font's put people down. Cheeto didn't even get hurt by Jose Aldo and John Lineker, who have both shown to have good power to be able to knock out opponents with one shot. And they couldn't hurt this guy. Cheeto Vera's chin is unreal. He can get hit for five rounds consecutively, most of them of course not landing clean at all, but some of them definitely did, and none of them were having an effect. But as soon as Cheeto lands on Rob Font, you see the world of a difference. 
you could see the power of his jab alone having a huge effect on Rob Font, let alone the times he knocked him down. Every time he landed the left hook, Rob Font was stunned. And the reason why a lot of people didn't know this about Chito Vera, the fact that he has so much power, is because for the majority of his career, he's been super defensive. And even at the points where he was offensive, he didn't put 100% power into his shots. So a lot did not get to see the amount of power he's able to generate in his shots when he chooses to be offensive. These days, the reason why he's doing so well in his career is because he's taken that approach now. He's kept his defensive qualities and now adding a lethal offense to his game. The results speak for themselves. And where you see the majority of Fon's punches landing are the 1-2s and the 1-2-3s, the jab by itself. He was landing many elbows in close range, most of the time slamming down with them. Font was also landing a lot of right hands to the body, specifically a right hook to the body and a right uppercut to the body. It really came off the same kind of setup. He would stride forward and reach in with a long left hook, getting into the range where he can really dig in with that right hand to the body. And the reason why he was able to land this on Chito Vera was because Chito was always guarding up high. He was more focused focused on the headshots and potentially Rob Font showed everybody that Chito may be vulnerable to the body. He started to block a lot of these body shots but throughout the fight most of them were landing. It is to be mentioned though that Font's setups for these body punches started to get addressed by Chito not necessarily the right hand to the body but it's actually the left to set up for it as well as that long stride. When someone's stepping so far into you and throwing out a long left hook to set you up all you got to do is punch him in the face straight. Just throw a jab or even a right straight depending what stance you're in. If you're a southpaw, throw a left straight instead. Or if you want to be a little bit more creative and get in there, Cheeto speared his way in with an elbow that landed clean just for some style points. Okay, so the jab, the 1-2, the 1-2-3, the, the close range elbow, and the right hook to the body were the main shots that Rob Font was landing in the fight. The majority of the effective things he was doing in there. But as for Cheeto Vera, early he was landing leg kicks. That was always going to be a given. Font does not check them. So these were of course going to be impactful. He is landing a lot of front kicks to the body and to the face. When he went to the head, it really showed his precision. This is actually the same strike that he knocked off Frankie Edgar with. As everybody knows about Chito Vera, he has a lot of dexterity in his kicks. To the point where he's now throwing Taekwondo style kicks. And this is what I've been talking about for a while. The variations of side kicks is one day going to be a game changer in MMA. I've been talking about this for over a year now. Fighters do not have a great grasp on how to defend side kicks yet. The simple side kick to the body without really good setups that you see usually in MMA fights, those can be easily defended of course. But when you set them up a little bit differently, this is when it makes it extremely difficult to defend against them because the chamber of a side kick, I actually made a whole video about this, the chamber of a side kick can be masked in for many other different kind of kicks, whether it be a round kick, a side kick, a hook kick, or even the axe kick. The chamber from a side kick is probably the most versatile thing you can do to set up any kind of kick you want to connect on your opponent. And you saw this in the fight. First, it was the hook kick. Then it was a side kick to the face. And then it was a spinning hook kick. And what Chito Vera did was, he found the opening for the side kick and the hook kick later in the fight. After he was attacking the legs and body with other types of kicks, whether it be oblique kicks like he threw here, or a Muay Thai style round kick with the power leg, he always saw that Rob Font was lifting his leg up to check a kick, planting himself in space and keeping his stance really tall so his head is really high up and he cannot move himself. That's important here, he stationed himself in place. Something you never want to do when someone's going to throw a high amplitude Taekwondo style kick. So knowing that this is Rob Font's defense and most of the kicks that he was throwing, Chito Vera saw an opportunity to start to get creative. So for the first time he went up with the chamber, what did Rob Font do? Lifted his lead leg up, dropped his hands, thought it was going to go to the body again because Chito did throw side kicks to the body earlier, only for Chito to come up high with a hook kick to the cheek. And this drops Rob Font. Cheeto's retraction with the hook kick needs some work for sure. Spinning after you throw the kick like this is pretty dangerous because you could get caught if the guy does evade the kick. You're leaving yourself open when you spin like this. So you generally just want to retract it back in stance because even if the opponent evades the kick and you retract it back into a chamber or into your stance, you could use the kick immediately again to perhaps side kick them away, push them away from yourself. But ultimately the kick lands and it shows the precision that Chito Vera has with his kicks. They're only getting better, man. And then later he lands the side kick instead, chambers it the same way, 
and look at Rafan's reaction. The same exact thing. He gets a heel right into the eye. That's rough, man. And Rafan shows the pain that he's in. Man, that's rough. But this is nothing against Rafan specifically because a lot of us don't know how to defend this. Taekwondo kicks are still not necessarily all the way used in MMA. They have some of the kicks in there. They have some of the spinning attacks and stuff. But the side kick, which is one of the most fundamental kicks in all of Taekwondo, this is going to be the most important. And it's still not in there yet. Some people are throwing it now. You see even Donald Cerrone throwing some of them. You see Conor McGregor throwing some of them to the legs and John Jones, of course. But when it comes to mixing up with the body and the head, the way, for an example, Wonderboy Thompson's able to do, you start to get different kind of results and different kind of reactions to certain things. The fact that Rafan did not know that a sidekick was going to come showed his inexperience in the area. Because once you see the chamber, you have to immediately know, okay, this is going to be some variation of a sidekick. It could perhaps turn into a hook kick or even a round kick, but I have to be prepared for this. The chamber itself needs to be defended. You need to jam it in, whether it be kicking them in or entering into range, or perhaps if you know which kick is going to come out, take off the necessary angle. And Rafa was so inexperienced from the Taekwondo kicks that when Chito took a huge step back to set up, and plant himself to throw a spinning kick. Rob gave the same reaction. Knee up, planted himself, and it gets a spinning kick? Man, that's asking for trouble. Because Cheeto threw a spinning hook kick. And engaging on a spinning hook kick needs to be perfect. Or you'll get that leg wrapped around your guard and the heel's gonna touch the back of your head. You cannot, and I repeat, you cannot plant yourself. Sit still when someone's throwing kicks like this. You need to move. They're just way too lethal. So when you see Rafan's reaction here to lift his knee up and station himself, this did not only work for the high amplitude kicks, but also for the flying knee that dropped Font. All Cheeto did was from the southpaw stands, he just jumped with his knee. And Font gained the same exact reaction again, not only for the kicks, but even for a flying knee, of course. Do not plant yourself there. You gotta get out of the way, man. And I think it was this knee that damaged Font's eye or his nose because he definitely had a broken nose and perhaps even a broken orbital. But a thing in this fight that showed us is Cheeto's not so much of a combination puncher. He will set up combos using his kicks, which actually he does pretty well. For an example, he did throw a side kick to the leg, not only to land it, but also to use it as an outside step. So it's two different purposes here. If it lands, okay, no outside step, but I did land a strike. If it doesn't land, okay, I step on the outside, I'm on the opposite stance, I'm going to line up my left straight now. Which is some genius work actually from Chito Vera, but when you talk about his punches, he's not necessarily too great at chaining up combinations with his hands. This is something that may have been exposed in the fight. Because for an example, when he throws a simple 1-2 combo, he gets extremely off balance. He reaches in really far with the jab and just leans forward with his right straight instead of stepping. And man, does that leave him exposed. It is definitely not the same as the way Rafan throws his 1-2, right? Cheeto throws this combination, I think, twice in the fight. And both times, man, he just got so off balance. Something definitely he's probably going to work on later. But that may be a bit exposed, where now Cheeto has to fight almost like a sniper. That's pretty much his style. Pot shotter, sniping, just one shot here and there and then reverts back into his defense until he picks out the next opening. And with that, let's get right into the moments of the fight, specifically talking about Chito Vera's defense. Man, his defense hit another level in this fight. One thing I love that he did was that in the opposite stance, he was able to hide behind Font's lead arm and use that to angle off defensively. For an example, in the first round, Font's looking to parry the lead arm, step on the outside to line up his right straight. Chito's onto it and easily slips on the outside of it. This is a very simple setup from opposite stance fighters and then he immediately saw the sneaky left jab and not only does he bob and weave on the outside of it he grabs it you never really see fighters grab an opponent's entire arm from a punch and he uses it to hide behind it and while he has his position he's automatically gonna be on the outside foot this gets him away from the danger of Font's right hand and typically any single strike from the stance. The only thing Fon could really do here is probably tie up with him or try to land an elbow, bending his arm inward. As Cheeto is hiding behind it, Font is looking to pivot off and throw a right uppercut, but look how far away it is. This is what I mean when Cheeto's away from the danger of the right hand. There's no way Font can land it. And then he does something that's similar in effect in the fifth round. 
So once in the first and then once in the fifth. Where in the opposite stance, Rafon is looking to throw out a jab. And Chito does not only defend it by, you know, parrying. He literally grabs his arm and forces it down, holding on to it. And then what does he do again? He hides behind that side and pivots off. This is the kind of stuff you do not normally see from fighters. And then we get to this moment here where Chito throws out a jab and Fon swiftly ducks under it in order to land his own combination. He pumps out a jab, which is meant as a feint, only to open up the head for his right hand. But Chito's onto it, man. I don't know how he knows. Usually fighters, when they see a body shot, they lower their hands to defend it, and it exposes their head. Cheetah was two steps ahead. He knew it was going to be a right hand, regardless of what was coming at him first. So again, he bobs and weaves under it, gets out on the outside, and then Font actually intelligently tries to intercept him with an elbow, because Cheetah was angling off in close range. A short elbow is fast enough and surprising enough to intercept that motion. But he knows again. He pulls away from the elbow in such close range, which is so hard to do, and switches stances away from Font, creating enough separation. Oh, and there's one moment right here in the second round that it's just an example I wanted to show some people why you don't normally want to step on the inside to line up your right hand on an opposite stance fighter. This is what happens, especially when you don't angle off correctly. When Fon's throwing a left jab to line up his right uppercut, he steps on the inside and look how awkward his positioning is. This is why you generally don't step on the inside, especially when you do not pivot off the right angle. When you throw a jab like this, you usually want to bring your right foot around at the same time so you can pretty much face him at that angle. But without doing so, Chito could just move right and he's completely away from the danger of the right hand. This is very similar when Chito hid behind the lead arm before. And then we get to this defensive moment from Chito. He uses just switching stances as a means of defense. Both these guys are in the opposite stance, which opens up each other's power hand and power leg. This means that Rafon's right leg is naturally open to land on Cheeto. So what he does is he fakes with his right hand to make it look like he's going to throw a right straight from that opposite stance. Cheeto actually takes the bait and looks to parry it, but quickly retracts his parry, sees that the right kick is coming instead. Rafon was looking to land a high kick on Cheeto, and what does he do? Switches stances and blocks the kick just in case. This takes away that natural opening that Rafon had for his kick. Now that they're in the same stance, Rafon's looking to set up a couple things here in order to land his left hook. He ducks low, throws a right overhand just to get Cheeto to back up a little bit and expose himself on the other side and wings in a huge left hook. But what does Cheeto do? Switches stances again, taking away the natural opening and easily able to block the punch and move away from it because not only switching stances is taking away natural openings, but it's also a way to create distance. It's almost like you're walking backwards. And then what do you see him do? Switches back into the orthodox stance and then switches again into southpaw quickly. So he's shuffling his feet here. And when Rafon saw him in the southpaw stance, he attacked. He threw the one-two combination looking to land it on the opposite stance fighter, thinking that Cheeto was going to stay in southpaw. But Cheeto quickly switches back into orthodox, takes away the natural opening again, and fades off to his left on the outside of Rafon's right straight while throwing a left hook. Man, that's some beautiful defense from Chito Vera. And we gotta give some love to Rafon. Some of his moments in the fight that he had some pretty good setups on. Right here in the fourth round, he had a pretty good distraction tactic going on here. Where he was distracting Chito on the sides by throwing like 50% slapping hooks. One to the right and then one to the left. Tightening up Chito's guard on both sides. So then he opens up Chito's center for the right straight. And then later in that fourth round, he almost had a devastating shot land on Chito. And this is actually something that Chito did not intend to defend. It's just that Rafon missed the punch. So Font enters in with a jab and ducks low, lowers his levels to a point that it looks like he was going to go for a takedown. And remember that Rafon did attempt a takedown earlier in the fight, so it didn't come from nowhere. Cheeto already knew that Rafon was going to attempt some. From this change of levels, Cheeto lowers his own. It looks like he was ready to defend a takedown and Font came up with an uppercut at the exact same time and only missed the punch. Cheeto did not defend this. He did not mean to slip it or anything. Rafon's aim was just off. Man, this could have been devastating because when you lower your head into a punch, it's like the biggest impact you can have from a single boxing exchange, lowering your head into an uppercut. I'm pretty sure Cheeto got surprised in this moment because he let his guard down and he moved away in a parallel stance and Font at least does land a right straight clean. 
on Chito Vera. And that is ultimately the end of the breakdown. Chito Vera is a player in the top of this division now. 100% has to fight someone in the top four. I would like to see him fight Corey Sanig. The timeline might not match itself because Corey fought a bit ago. He might want to fight now. Chito probably doesn't want to fight right now, so Chito's timeline does match with Peter Yan. But the thing about Peter Yan is he is the number one contender. And he might want to fight someone else. He might want to fight TJ Dillashaw or Jose Aldo again before fighting Marlon Vera. Although I would love that fight as a fan, I'm all for Jan versus Vera. But looking at the most likely scenario and another fight that would be super fun, Cheeto versus Corey is a great one. So I would take either of those. I think those are the only two fights that will be put together. And man, both those fights are going to be tough. Cheeto versus Corey is competitive with the fact that Cheeto could take it to the ground and he probably is better Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He also has really good leg kicks, which are going to land. He also has really good defense that might open up Corey Sanhagen. Ultimately, I do favor Corey to win that, but it is a bit more competitive. I definitely favor Patreon to win. It's hard for Vera to really get things off on him besides the kicks. I think the kicks from Chito Vera are going to be definitely where he's going to shine in that one. But man, imagine how slow that first round is going to be. That's going to be like a turtle race. It's going to be like two strikes landed in that entire round. Both guys are going to be looking for their openings. Chito's going to be super defensive. Patreon is just analyzing the whole time. That would be pretty funny to watch. But leave in the comments below who do you want to see next for Vera to fight. And make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to hit the bell as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.